Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Market Rant, the new podcast where we will be ranting on markets and pretty much anything we want to talk about. I am Joe Fami. This is my co-host, Tom, Tom Canfield. Um, just a quick intro. We've known each other through social media. We've met at a couple of trading events. We did a talk at the Traders for a Cause awesome charity event about a week ago. Uh, we're very grateful for the all, all the awesome feedback we got because it was kind of a talk just like this, a podcast style talk, and everyone said you guys should do a podcast. So here we are. I'd like to pass this over to Tom if you want to give a quick intro and kind of what people might be able to expect from this podcast. Uh, thanks, Joe. Um, what they should expect. I, I have absolutely no fucking idea what people should expect from, it, expect from this. I mean, like, for me, it's a therapy session. Yeah, uh, I'm here to entertain myself, first and foremost, and you every once in a while, because I like making you laugh. And um, talking about the markets, talking about issues that we as investors and traders deal with on a daily basis, weekly basis, monthly basis, uh, the, the chaos of the markets, the chaos of who we are, how we make all that work, all that shit. It's just it's good to get it out. It's good to be open. It's good to be honest. Maybe it resonates with people. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. But it's a, it's a great place for both you and I to kind of share who we are, get some of our thoughts out there. Um, and maybe people like it. Yeah. Now, because we're calling this the market rant, because I think it's just going to be a series of us going back and forth with mini rants. And your first rant is on boring podcasts. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, if there is another financial podcast that bores the shit out of it. Like I literally, I don't have a single one that I listen to because I can't get through them. They're just so boring. I agree. Like I, I've, I've been watching the market all week. I know what it did. I, I was there. I, I, you know, I know what I think it's going to do going forward. And your opinion is not going to change that. It's like, and they, they, they talk dronely and they talk about economic data and they, it's just, it's painful. It's like, it's like something my grandfather sitting in his sitting in his rocking chair with a, you know with this pipe you know is going to listen to yeah a bow tie and a british accent yeah it's like you're right you're right someone told me one time i did a podcast and they said oh you're not giving ideas and you're not i mean we will pull up charts and of course but this isn't ideas we post in all, get your own all ideas. week we talk about the markets and ideas and charts and you can bore yourself to death reading whatever you want on the weekends we want to talk about markets some aspects that might be bothering us or that are talked about in the you know for the week and just just make this fun because uh you know, I think it's about right. the personalities and having fun. So let's get into the biggest question that's on everyone's mind, which is, uh, has the market come too far too fast? The disconnect, that's all I keep huh. hearing about, the disconnect between the global economy being shut down, but the market's having two or three of their greatest weeks in history. Um, Personally, that's not the biggest question on my mind. I'm more concerned about what I'm going to eat for lunch. But anyway, I know that's important to you that's, and your clients. That's the biggest question on my I'm I'm doing the opposite of intermittent fasting, by the way. I'm eating for 16 straight hours and I'm resting for eight. So it's I call it intermittent, intermittent fatty. Um, it's, a, it's a new diet I'm working on. And all I'm, right, I'm noshing on my pistachios because I have a huge pistachio addiction. And when I'm trading, I fucking eat them all day. That's, all, that's, all that's, day. that's, 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 that's Sustains awesome. Me. You can't, well, yeah, you can't stop. Once you start eating pistachios, it's the whole bag's gone. Um, okay. So everyone is saying this is bullshit. Everyone is struggling and what's going on. They're bailing out companies and the airlines and the cruise lines and all this other stuff. And all the, you know, rich corporations are, are, you know, getting richer and the, the common folk is, is getting, uh, hurt by all this. And I agree with a lot of that rant. I agree yeah. with a lot of that, but I have been saying this, I've written about it for Yahoo Finance. I've tweeted about it. You have to separate. We're talking about social issues, income inequality. We're talking about political issues. Has the government responded fast enough? Are they doing too much, too little, whatever? All those things have to be separated from your analysis of the market. You cannot yep. let, I mean, Warren Buffett, again, paraphrasing him, if you let your views on politics affect your in, uh, market investing, you're making a huge mistake. If you're letting your views, I'm, I'm taking it a bit further, your social issue views affect your uh, investing, you're making a big mistake. I will say this, this is my rant right to start off the bat. I don't oh. care if anyone gets anything out of this, but you have to understand 
Your opinion means shit. My opinion means shit. Your neighbors, the person on TV, it doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is the big institutions because they will run you over. If you're buying 100 shares, 1,000 shares, 10,000 shares, it doesn't matter. When BlackRock and Fidelity and T. Rowe Price and Vanguard and all the big pension funds and mutual funds and hedge funds are buying millions and millions of shares, you have to do your best to anal analyze what they're doing. Your opinion doesn't matter because the direction of the market is all that matters. And if you are uh, analyzing and seeing the big institutions are coming into the markets, stick with that trend. If they are getting the hell out of the markets, don't fight that. Right. The market doesn't care what you think. I don't care what you think. People who want to put out their opinions, it doesn't fucking matter. I had to switch just to, in full disclosure. I had to switch to day trading from swing trading. I was a swing trader for 20 plus years. Okay. And I was having a hard time being levered into a market that I didn't believe in. It just it, early on in my trading career for the longest time, it wasn't, it wasn't an issue. I was able to be blind, trade like a first grader, follow the lines, do what you're told, blah, 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 blah. Don't think, don't think, don't think. You get older and you think you get wiser and you start thinking more. And I started falling more and more into that trap. Shifting to day trading, it's been beautiful because like, I don't give a fuck what happens to the market every single day. I really don't. I mean, I'm still following the same metrics and whatever, which are very similar to what you do, which is kind of one of the things that connected us is because we both sort of see the market the same way. But every single day, I'm not, I'm not levered to my opinion. I can just take the market as it is and I can have my opinions. And I think this market is absolutely stupid right now. I don't right. get it. It doesn't make sense. Let it's me, not even a free market anymore. Let, let me, is just Go ahead. Let me, put that thing up. Let me pull up a uh, market smith chart. Uh, so I'm pulling up a daily chart of the NASDAQ composite. Don't get uh, too comfortable with us putting charts up because we're not going to do it very often. But yeah, anyway. we're doing it to mix it up. So I'll, I'll, I'm just basically saying what my point is off of this lows, if you track what the big institutions are doing. And someone will say, okay, Joe, I agree with that. How do you do it? Uh, learn, get a chart book, learn about keeping track on volume. When you see some big volume days come in and you see the institutions on the big up days and you see in the NASDAQ, for example, you know, whatever it is, four of the last six days, all these big days where the market's up, those are big footprints of those big institutions coming in and buying shares. Whether right. it makes sense or not, I don't argue with it. I just want to know what they're doing and try to follow it because um, my point, which I made in my Yahoo they're Finance- the move the markets. Right, right. So and my point, which I made in my Yahoo Finance article three, four weeks ago, was just be open-minded mm -hmm. to the, the concept of the market's a discounting mechanism, meaning it discounts the bad news a lot of times and what could be happening six to nine months from now, right. okay? And it's possible, just possible, that we might have discounted all the bad news and maybe because of technology, we're going to get out of this sooner than people realize and just be open-minded to it. Am I open-minded to that we could go back and retest the lows? Absolutely. But I'm just saying a lot of people I know are struggling and really frustrated because they're like, this is bullshit. This is all the Fed. This doesn't make sense. Everyone's losing their job. Unemployment's 25, 50%. Everything's going to be shut down. Why is the market going up? That's what I mean, the disconnect. And comparing it to, you know, the Great Depression or comparing it to, the, you know, the Spanish flu, which was what, 1918 or whatever, and looking at that, I mean, I get it. But our world is so different now. Our technology is so different. Our biotechnology is so different. We have so many more weapons at our disposal yeah. that, that can protect us. The Fed is now, whether we like it or not, it's a weapon that we use to keep us from, you know, colossally getting buried again. Yeah. And, 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 and you, know, like you know how the it's Spanish, unnatural. you know how the Spanish flu ended? Everyone just who had it died. It basically took whatever, yeah. two, three years. Everyone just died. And they're like, okay, it's done. Um, you're absolutely right. You're telling me with the advances in biotech and crunching big data and doing some of these trials that, I mean, we're essentially doing a real time trial on, not on mice, on humans. You're in the hospital and you're sick with this virus and you're like, well, you're going to die or we have this experimental drug. Give me the fucking drugs. I don't care. And then when you take the drugs, they're like, oh, did the guy, oh, he died. I guess it didn't work. Yeah, it sucks. I'm not being like flipping about it, but oh, 
Right. I lived his, you know, he or she lived. The conditions are improving. Okay. This is working. We are doing a real time trial on people combined with the advances in technology that I'm not saying it's happy go lucky. Cause again, you have to separate your world analysis from the market analysis. I'm just saying the market might be, might be telling us that things will resume you know, 70, 80% back to normal sooner than people expect. We have to be open to that. As much as it doesn't make sense in my brain, I have to be open to that, which is why I'm thankful that I day trade now because I can, I can divorce it. So we're going to so, give you a market recap of last week. Yeah, I pulled up a 10-minute chart of, the, of yeah. the S&P 500 for you to go through. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, so just so you can under, kind of understand some of the things that we're dealing with right now, and a lot of you guys are well aware of this, you know, most of the action happens overnight now. It's in the silly session. I, I, I can't stand it. Like, I don't want to trade at one o'clock in the morning. I want to go to bed. I want to watch a show with my wife. Like, can we, get, can we contain it to the hours of 8.30 to 3, maybe an hour on either side? Yeah. We have to go all night. Anyway, so the market gaps down a little bit on Monday. Point to where, where the week starts. Yeah, the week starts right here, April 13th, uh, Boom. Monday. Okay. Market gaps down. Yeah. So it's a baby gap down, and then it drops straight down, goes below the low, shakes everybody out, and then just kind of slowly grinds up the rest of the day. And then the next day, massively gaps up. And then this is, this is, tu this is Tuesday right here. That's a T for Tuesday. T and for here's Tuesday. A gap, that's a gap up you're talking about right there. Yep. Yeah, gap up, grinds higher. We're thinking, okay, things look better. We're above the high from last week, and here we go. Very next day, massive gap down. I don't even remember what the news is. And then it just kind of grinds around. Thursday, we get a bunch, of, a bunch of news, and then it just stays inside the range. Thursday was just a colossal bag of dicks. Actually, Wednesday and Thursday, both days, just put them together. Bag is, that of a te dicks. is this the technical Nothing. firm for that bag, is a of, technical bag, market bag, bag of dicks right here? This, this, this is, range? This is the shit you have to deal with after you've been spending a full month with all four of your adult children back in your house. You're using phrases to describe things like, oh, it's just a bag of dicks. Uh, that's, that's, a, that's a great technical term. Thank you. And then, so it's just sitting there in this, in this thing. It's, I don't even think we're halfway up the, day, uh, up, up the range for the week. And then all of a sudden, some news comes out after the bell. Apparently, Gilead is, has cured us of everything. Yeah. And thank God, Boeing's going to start making airplanes. I don't know who's going yeah, to Yeah, and them. the country's going to open up like May 1st, yeah. May 15th. And, 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 and it's, all, it's all sunshine and rainbows. Skyrockets. So you you just you just made me think of a really quick point, and I want you to go back just real quick. I think the market's trading on psychology to fuck cool. all the people who are short and negative. I don't yeah. think, in other words, I don't think this makes sense. Realize that the market is there to fool the majority. I've used that phrase a million times, and I'll use it a million times more. That's why I'm obsessed with psychology. I'm obsessed with sentiment. The majority of people I, I'm talking to are end of the world bearish, and the market's saying, "Okay, this is how you're going to think. I'm going to shove it up your ass right now." Yep. Go that's back. That's, that's my technical term. Sorry. So you were saying Thursday gap well, up, get, Gilead. Yeah, gap up. Yeah, gap up. It's, it, it went up way higher than you're actually looking at right now. And then it settled into that range and then it sold off and then kind of ground sideways all Friday. I mean, just put everybody to sleep, put you out of your misery. Week's over. That's Friday. Let's go home. F for Friday. F for failure to stick around and take advantage of the absolute monster short squeeze when all the banks could buy their, you know, their options for pennies and then just rip the shit out of the market when it's thin and everybody given up for the week and the, boy, the, the spy yeah. went up four points or something stupid like that. And there's your week. It's yep. done. That's your week. There you go. That and Bob's your uncle. It's like, there's your market recap. What's going to happen next week? No fucking clue. And there's your, there's the wisdom I'm going to send you off with for next week. I have yeah. no idea. There's and I don't need outlet. to know. I don't care. It, it's just, the less I know, I have to, like, like Joe's really good with keeping track of everything and kind of absorbing everything and having some really clear thoughts. Thoughts are bad for me. Very bad. The more Tom thinks like a first grader, the better he is. I don't know. I don't care is what makes me money. Keep it simple. When the stock Keep goes it simple, up, stupid. I buy it until it stops going up. And when it stops going up, I sell it. In the talk we gave for Traders for a Cause, you know, a lot of people loved your line, uh, uh, stay dumb and follow price, or I'm paraphrasing. Yeah. Be dumb, follow price, just follow. Oh, look, it's going up. I'm going to buy it. Yeah, oh, but financials and energy aren't participating. This isn't broad-based. Then don't fucking buy them. It's that simple. There you go. Buy what works. Buy what's going up. I, Whatever I, that, it doesn't matter what you think about it.
Just buy it. I screen the market every night on weeknights, school nights, whenever, to get a feel for the market. That's what I'm doing it. The main reason for screening is to get a real feel because 90% of the health of the market is when you break down individual stocks. It's not the economy. It's not some stupid jobs report. It's not whatever spy levels, whatever bullshit you're looking at. For me, at least, 90% of what I judge the health of the market is the price action of stocks. The reason I wrote that Yahoo article three, four weeks ago is because I screened over the weekend. And I was like, Oh my goodness, a lot of stuff, a little tension is taken off the market. And semiconductors, software, medical products, biotech, they're all screaming back. Yeah. Close, some were at new highs, some were close to new highs. And I'm like, wow, maybe the market's a little healthier than normal. You might wanna, I, the point of my article was the coronavirus numbers, of course they're gonna get worse. Deaths, cases, yeah. of course they're gonna get worse. Doesn't mean the market has to get worse. And the responses I got, I don't care about the hate. That's not the point. The responses I got were beyond end of the world negative. We're all going to die. The Dow's going to go to 5,000. What are you looking at, you idiot? Uh, this is going to be worse than the Great Depression. And I'm like, the stocks are telling me it's possible. It's not going to be that bad. And to your point, you know, you've used the term bifurcated market. There's haves and have nots. In other words, some businesses are actually going to not be that affected by this and possibly even be stronger. And unfortunately, some businesses are going to be affected by this. And you have to know, you know, separate the two and maybe gravitate towards the strength and, and not trade the weakness. But, you know, go ahead, please. Well, it's just bifurcated is a term that Bob Pisani, I think, pounded into, into my brain or whatever back in 2099 when the NASDAQ was absolutely ripping. Um, 2099. Wow, you have a lot of foresight. Oh, you said 2099. Sorry. Work with me, Joe. Work with me. <laughs> Sorry. Um, anyway, well, you know that Y2K thing, and he just kept using the term bifurcated. And for, the, for probably the first three months that he was using it, I didn't have a clue what it meant. What's he talking about? And it basically means that, you know, everything's not trading together. I mean, the NASDAQ's clearly stronger than everything else right now. Um, and back then it was even more so. But yeah, we're basically riding the coattails of 50 stocks right now. Yeah. I know you want to argue that maybe there's more because there's a bunch of biotechs and whatever, but biotechs, I can't trade stocks that have no sales, no earnings. It just can't do it. But yeah, anyway. Whatever, whatever works for people. It's all good. It's, whatever the reason is, yeah, you've got you've got all these stocks that are ripping, you've got gold that's ripping, you know, all, all this stuff. And then you've got 80% of the market that looks like it's all going out of business. But the market keeps finding a way to go up. And it's not our job to fucking argue with that. All right. So Tom, I'm, I'm an ESPN reporter. You're the yeah. uh, GM of the uh, Cincinnati, oh, yeah. Cincinnati Bengals. Okay. And you have the first pick coming up this week in the NFL draft. So Tom, who are you going to pick in the draft? What's your answer? Gold. <laughs> I was getting towards a different thing. Okay, so oh, oh, you, you have a different. What's you your have, point, Joe? You, you have the tenth pick in the draft. What's okay. what? What's what's what? Who are you going to pick? The best player available. Dude, I don't know football. Okay, so well, yeah, I'm going to pick the best player. Who the best player available on the board? Okay, right. So I'm sorry. Didn't I should have made I, it I, hockey. Like it would have made so much more sense I to know. me. Hockey would have. I even wore St. Louis Blues colors for you. Thanks, brother. And I know they're reigning champs, but the Bruins haven't yeah. lost in two months, so deal with it. No, they haven't. <laughs> It's an impressive All right, stat, so too. The point, the point I was going to get to is when you ask anyone, hockey, basketball, football, who are you going to pick in the draft? What do they say? The best player available, okay? Right. My analogy to the markets is why wouldn't you pick from the best stocks available? Yes, you're right. It is 50 stocks. I actually think it's more than that, but that's why we love each other and we have different differences. That's fine. I think it's there's some real, real strength out there from companies like software companies that can kind of operate with great margins and they're not really affected because think about it, more people working from home. Internet yeah. security has been on fire because yeah. you need to uh, beef that up. So their businesses were already great and they're getting better. So my point is, if you're going to pick the best player available, why wouldn't you pick the best stocks available? Now, to each their own, because Carl Icahn might be, be buying some beaten down energy name, but number one, he has deep pockets. Number two, he has tons and tons of patience. And number three, he's willing to buy more when it goes down. So if you want to mess around with cruise ships or airlines or energy or some beaten down financials or whatever, God bless, go right ahead. This isn't financial advice. I'm just saying you might have to deal with a lot more patience and maybe 
they'll come back in two or three years towards their highs where yeah. there's already stocks at their highs right now. I'm not a patient guy, Joe. I can't do that. Well, th neither am I. That's why I buy the stuff I've that's got already at the highs. I'm incredibly impatient. 20 minutes is a long time to be in a trade for me. I need to know that it's going up and I need to know it's going up right now. So unless there's a monster short squeeze on something that I might hitch a ride on, I stick with stuff that's working. Now, see, I'm more of a swing trader. My holding period can be, you know, a few days, few weeks, few months, something like that, which yeah. is fine. And, and that, again, I'm, so let me ask you a question because you're big on the psychology. You've switched from that to a day trader. Have you noticed an effect on your psychology, positive or more negative? Well, the positive effect, yeah. There's, and, and, and I noticed a shift in the market. I want to say back around 2015, 2016, where, where gaps started to be more of an issue and the nature of the way that I traded, um, I struggled with gaps. I found myself struggling more and more with gaps and, and I wasn't psychologically, I wasn't dealing with the drawdowns and I wasn't dealing with the risk the same way that I had for my entire trading career. So I kind of had to back away and figure out a little bit a different method uh, to get my head around because uh, I didn't, the gaps weren't going away. I think it's kind of like that, that, that tinkering period of when algos finally took over the market and had the ability to kind of maneuver things the way that they wanted to maneuver. At least that's the argument that I use. Yeah. Um, in the grand scheme of things, nothing's really changed, but price action and price behavior to me trades differently than it did from 2000 to 2015 when I was doing all my swing trading and, and, and it felt like it was a little bit more of a controlled flow of trend. Whereas I don't, and we've also got a lot more Fed involvement now, which I also think changes the, the equation dramatically. But yeah, so one thing, I, go ahead, sorry. Go no, ahead. I was just going to say, I, the, the shift has helped me because it's allowed me to stand here and be irritated as shit with the nature of the way things are or whatever and, and, and kind of carry that opinion of like, you know, the Fed is just absolutely taking the free market system away. There's no risk anymore. We're just going to, we're going to buy our way out of this with the printing press and all of that. And I can get all worked up about that and not have it attach to my trading because once the bell rings, I'm a hundred percent in cash. I have no See, risk. Overnight. I, I got to interrupt you. I don't care. I don't care about any of that. I don't care about any of that. The people who are ranting about the Fed, I, I don't say I don't have a care in the world, but my job is not to care about that. My job is to analyze the markets. Yes, was the Fed? Oh, this is only the Fed's involved. You don't think the Fed was involved in '99, in '98, '99? Well, it was. It was they not to this capital, level. and they just didn't do QE. They doubled the money f uh, supply and all the flows because, like right. you said, they're worried about Y2K. Because at midnight on January, whatever, December 31st, '99, everything was going to blow up. So to ensure from that, they did a different version of QE. There just wasn't social media and 19 different yeah, news yeah, stations yeah. bitching about it. But my point is, the Fed's always been involved, which is why Marty Zweig's greatest line: "Don't fight the Fed." So no. you can fight it and argue about it and think you're going to change the world fuck it you're an idiot just stop it it's stop it you're embarrassing well, yourself you're embarrassing your point, yourself and ran ran, ran ran about the fed who cares for a minute god damn it's just like, called the market rant for a reason to 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 your point though i was an idiot i was getting emotionally involved it was difficult for me i wasn't making as much money as i used to so i switched so that i could manage that side of my emotions it took me a little while to learn how to do it, but thankfully now I'm kind of figuring it out. And I got to tell you, I love it. It's so much, you know, I can be, I can be ADD as hell. I can get in there. I can do what I need to do for an hour and a half, two hours. And then I can, you know, go take a three hour walk. And, and I, I don't, I don't, I don't care if the world blows up. Well, I do. But you <laughs> well, you make a great point about two things. One, there are huge gaps and I, I will agree. I'm annoyed with that huge gaps up and down. Everything is happening overnight. We're a global economy. The futures, uh, you know, whatever they travel trade all night. Yeah. That, that is annoying. So that's a great reason if you want to be a day trader. So you don't have yeah. to deal with that stress of waking up and all, oh, but this is going to be just a brutal day or the huge gap up or gap down. Um, the other thing I was going to say is I think for people who don't want to day trade and have a longer term time frame, whatever that time frame is, is there's nothing wrong with taking a smaller position to deal with that volatility. In other words, if you normally buy 100 shares, maybe you buy 50 so that you're cutting your volatility in half. Yeah, I had a hard time doing that, too. I had a hard time shrinking my size. 
um, down to, to, to manage the volatility. You know, like my ego didn't want to. I mean, I'm a egocentric, narcissistic, self-absorbed, want to be a big hitter. You know, all that stuff. I'm competitive as hell. Like I'll race the dog down the street if he just looks at me funny. You know, that's, that's my nature. I hope you don't have a greyhound. I don't. I've got a really small dog, so I win all the time. All right, I like there you that go. a that, lot. It builds confidence. Um, which kind of gets me into the rant that I want to – I want to go off on about Twitter, but I don't know if we've got time this week. Let's close it out with social media. Go ahead. Yeah. We'll close it out with the, well, with the I mean, rant Twitter's on social for media. Idiots. I, you know, let me, let me just, I want to say that Twitter's for idiots and I'm the biggest idiot of all of them because I'm on Twitter and I'm on Twitter a lot. And, so uh, am I. I know. Um, but if you think that Twitter is going to educate you, if you think that Twitter is going to solve your financial trading problems, if you think that you're going to get tons of good ideas, the cost, at least for somebody like me, is massive. Yeah, are there some good ideas that float out there sometimes? Sure, sure. Are there some guys that are out there pounding, pounding the table and, and, and talking their book and doing all that stuff? Yeah. But I got off Twitter this week. I said, I'm, I'm done. I, I need a break again. I do this every once in a while. Smart to do that. I had a I, – I, now – I have my bad weeks, but I have the best week I've had in probably six months. And, you know, right, wrong, or indifferent, like I compete. Like, so if I see somebody posting something, like there's something that goes on inside me. And anybody out there that tells me that it doesn't happen to them is full of shit. I mean, it's, it's kind of like, it, like good trading is is not about following your system and not about following your plan and not about being disciplined and all of those things is it about that okay yeah to a certain degree but consistent long-term good trading is about dealing with how well you adapt to trading like an idiot when your head is completely up your ass and you've got all kinds of emotions flying through you and you're completely off your plan and you're completely fucked up and you can't do anything right, long-term good trading is about dealing with that animal. And so I took steps because I'm not satisfied with the way that I've been trading lately. I mean, I'm doing all right, but I'm not, I'm, I'm nowhere near close to my potential and what I think I should be doing. And I'm realizing I'm getting, I'm getting moved around in my mind because, you know, I want to be like so-and-so or what? You don't like to admit that. But at the end of it, when you look at yourself, you're like, shit, I do do that. God, I'm undisciplined. Do you think God, being off of are, Twitter helped? You think it helped huge. this week? For me, this week, huge. Like I jumped on and I, 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 I'll read a couple of guys that whose opinions I trust kind of to see how it, how it, how it helped me. But in terms of engagement and all of that stuff, because I, you know, I'm it's, to it's toxic. It's toxic. It, it's so toxic. And I love somebody, the phrase social media is not who we are. It's who we want to be. Right. And, and it's all bullshit. But the thing that's so scary is people like you get it. I get it. I take it with a grain of salt. And a lot of times I forget to put hashtag sarcasm at the end of almost every one of my tweets because I just assume people are like not taking everything so damn seriously. Oh, yes, but, we are. But they yes, are. are. And I sometimes forget that because not that everything's a joke to me. I'm just I'm trying to be loose during the day because I'm with you. And one thing I love about you and respect about you is you're one of the few people who is actually honest about saying I have shit going on in my head. Oh, my gosh. I I, have, we're I all dealing with financial issues and relationship well, issues and, and, and social issues and, and health issues and whatever else is affecting us. And how do you leave that, uh, which we can get into in the next episode. It's a great yeah, yeah. Uh, segue for the next one. Leave people hanging. <laughs> how, how do you, you manage the village in your head? Yeah. How do you separate that? So when you're sitting down in your environment to trade all that bullshit, doesn't affect you and we can talk about that next uh, yeah. time i've on built Babies. a lot of different strategies that are all homegrown and 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 they work for me but maybe they'll help other people or at least trigger some thoughts about how they can because you have to kind of figure out how to how to protect yourself from yourself yeah uh, i mean it's that's that's ultimately long term what has helped me stay alive in this game is finding new and different ways to protect myself from myself I, th I would love to hear some of the ways you've come up with that. We'll be able to, this is a great topic to discuss next time. I have a few things that have helped me. So uh, 
Sounds like we can talk about that uh, next time. I just want to tell everyone, thanks so much for tuning in. Give us yep. some feedback. We hope to be doing this on a regular basis. And uh, I enjoyed this. So thanks, Tom. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Always good to see you, Joe. All right. We'll see you guys soon. soon. Thank right. you.